Hi, welcome to Art by Anna Marie. Today we are doing some colour mixing where I'm going to show you how to mix up your colours onto a palette. I'm going to show you how to mix up a tube of colour if you have tubes and I'm also going to show you how to mix up the dry pan if you have dry pans as well. So this is a beginner's episode on how to mix some colour. As it would happen, when I was doing the green episode last time, I accidentally made this and I kept it. Um, I say it was an accident because what happened was I painted it to show you the different types of green that you could get and forgot to record. <laughs> so um, I thought I'd keep it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it as my base layer to show you guys how to add some flowers to a grass scene. I showed you in the last video, I'll put it up here, how to create the colour green um, to start your background. So make sure you've got that ready um, and make sure that it's dried. Then you're going to um, paint along with me to put some flowers in the foreground with an emphasis on how much water to add to your pigment and also an emphasis on using uh, dried pigment as well as tube pigment. So we're hoping to get um, two really nice paintings from this. We might stop at one, I'm not 100% sure. We'll see how it goes. And um, make sure you do leave a comment below if there's anything in particular that you're looking for when you're doing your painting because um, this suggestion actually came from a viewer. So um, big thank you um, for your help to find out what it is you need to know when you're a beginner. Um, and you are starting your watercolour journey. You'll see here I've got my half pans sorted. Um, I've also got a ceramic bowl that I'm using um, to do some mixing and I've also got a plastic palette that I'm going to show you some mixing as well. I have a palette that I leave pretty much set up which is this palette here. It's got lots of wet watercolour in it. When you activate it, you can kind of um, make your layers there. These big sections of the palette are excellent for mixing colour. However, I tend to not clean them very often because I use the same colour palette a lot of the time. So I don't have to um, clean it up that much. But every now and then when I've run out of space, you can kind of see I've got um, creams and pinks and purples and then a pinky brownie color and a brownie color and um, so it's quite detailed. So for today I'm just going to use this clean palette with you guys and again I'm going to use the um, bottom of a ceramic dish to show you that you can do both and um, show you what that's like. I'm using a number three sable paintbrush. I'll go into the different kind of paint brushes um, again another time. The sable is going to give me a lot of control with um, how I apply the paint. I'm going to start off by getting my water and I'm going to put some water in the middle. And I, some people have a dropper because <laughs> um, I live on the boat and I don't have a lot of room for stuff. I tend to just use whatever I have. So I'm just putting, using the paintbrush to put the water in and I've probably put about four or five drops in those. These are gonna be my greens. So I'm gonna show you here um, how to do the grass. So I've got three bits of water and you can see there, I'm just putting the water from the paintbrush and I'm kind of activating it and it's quite chunky. I'm gonna put that into my water and I've made that much watercolour. Get a little wash your paintbrush again. It's pretty heavy with water now. Put it back in your green. Mix it around again. I like to twist it and then back into here. You can keep doing that throughout the process if you find you've run out of that colour. I've cleaned my paintbrush I'm going to go to my other green. I'm just doing grass today, but this applies to any kind of um, ways that you're trying to activate your watercolour and any kind of wash that you're trying to get. The idea is to get the pigment from here activated and into your watercolour, into your water. And 
and again they're nice and activated now so you can use them again at any time um, I like to use a little bit of blue with my greens as well I know that's quite a bright blue so I'll put that in there the other thing we need for our greens is a bit of red and a purple and I don't have a purple in this set so I'm just going to take a bit of my blue and a bit of this red I'm not 100% sure if you can hear the boat creaking in the background. If you can, there's absolutely nothing I can do about that. There we go, I'm trying to show you everything. Okay. All right, and we're just gonna go with a layer of grass. Um, take our green. There we go. Clean my brush, introduce a little bit of purple to it. A bit more green. Introducing the other colors to the green as the wash is going to just make it have a little bit more texture. There really is no rule to it. You just kind of have to think about the light hitting the grass at different points. Um, just before I put it in the sun, I want to show you this one trick. You see how the layer is quite thin? Um, go into your actual color which is still wet and put some of it on your paintbrush and we want to keep the tips quite bright so we're going to go to the bottom and introduce that undiluted pigment in I'm pressing really lightly that is a light press clean your brush go into your pure blue in this case, this blue is um, a heavier pigment than the green. Take it up. And what that's going to do is you're just going to find when it dries, um, that pigment's going to be moved around differently than if you had just put on a, a wishy-washy layer. I really want to put in some red. I've got my red over here, but I want to put in some undiluted red. Because red tends to spread. It's really interesting. The other color that tends to spread is the yellow. So remember we activated the yellow. Get the yellow, put your dots at the top. Blend them all in a bit. Do not touch them any further than that. The temptation is to create mud. Okay, five minutes, be back like that. So a few things that have happened now is that we've run out of our green uh, and that's really not a problem. Again, some clean water, put some extra clean water in there and put your green back in. Um, and that same thing happens for the purple. Um, it's really just a matter of practice knowing how much you're gonna need for whichever. And um, the, the thing I want to do for this is I want to create a layer of grass and then a layer of flowers and then a layer of grass and I'm going to see how that goes. I haven't done it before. I'm just going to have a little practice with you guys because if you don't practice, then you don't um, discover things. So we're going to practice together. We're going to take some of our red and I'm going to work it straight from this palette here. Um, my layer is is not 100% dry. I'm gonna work into it while it's still a little bit wet and a little bit shiny. Um, and that's so that I can have a little bit of bleed into the flower layer. But 
it genuinely won't matter how long you leave it for. Um, I've got my reds and I'm dab dab dabbing them. Again still using my three brush because I'm just playing around to show you guys um, how to apply the paint. So I've got my water on my brush. I got quite a lot of um, water in that red now and that's okay because if you don't use it all it just dries up and you can activate it again next time. Um, I might start to zone off a bit here and blend into a bit of an orangey tone. Um, you can see how old my palette is. This is my orange so I'm just activating it there with a bit of water. Dabbing on some flowers. Um, make sure your brush is clean. Get some yellow on your brush. Dab your yellow in. You are not going to a hundred percent see it. Let's see if I can show you. You are not going to a hundred percent see the yellow when everything is wet. This is one of those things where you have to have faith in the drying process and just know that that yellow is going to do its thing and it's going to end up lovely. We only used orange over this side and red over that side so I'm going to put some red on the tips, the extremities and that's going to merge in. They already have red, so they're going to get some orange on their tips. I've only got these two, like this orange and this yellow in this old kit. So I'm going to take a very undiluted orange. I'm going to take quite a lot of my yellow just to make a, a lighter orange. Put those on the tips. It's quite possible that you wouldn't even have noticed that that different color di differentiation happened, but that's the thing about watercolor. The slightest little bit is just something that catches your eye and tricks the eye. The other thing I like to do is I like to get a little bit of green. And then I like to work out where the stems might be and I take it right up to the petal and then that bit of green spoils into the petal. It's a really light touch. If I was doing a heavy touch, it would look like that. I'm doing a light touch. I like it when the green goes into the colours. I think it looks more florally. I take some of that undiluted green with my paintbrush on the side. I'm just going to tease out some of these stronger lines because I don't love them, but you might love them. I don't like things to look too exact in watercolour. I'm not after photorealism. And that's your layer of flowers with your layer of grass we're going to go straight to the next layer of grass we're going to do that straight from the palette again but we're going to go actually let me show you we're going to mix a little bit from here because as the grass goes kind of further back we need to introduce some of our purple into our green you get a softer kind of green. I am making a bit of an effort not to touch this red here. 
you know, if it happens, it happens. I'm not gonna worry about it too much because this is just the first layer. I'm gonna come back to this picture again and put on a, a final layer, show you guys how to do that. I'm just mixing around with these colors to get, I don't want the pure green. I want a little bit more shadow in it. All right, and let's go back in with our red layer of flowers again. Start with red on this side. And then I'm gonna to move to orange. I might even move to the lighter orange. Getting a little bit more abstract on this uh, up on this top bit because I only really like to have one key focus area in the painting. Get your yellow. Find somewhere in the middle to do your dots. For your orange ones, you want to have your red tips. And then for your red ones, you want to have your orange tips. I'm just going to make that orange a little bit lighter. And then we're going to go with our last layer which is going to be a little bit of blue with the purple and the green. If you are concerned about all of those layers touching, um, just dry in between each of those layers. I really like the flow because I'm coming back again to um, paint over it. That's got to dry now. Um, as it's kind of um, just getting glossy, you'll see here, this bit isn't completely dry, but it's just what I call like glossy paint um, where it's still a bit sticky. You can go back in with a little extra red and start back in on that layer. That won't be your final layer. That would be adding an extra layer because the final layer will do with a smaller paintbrush. But it's nice to add a little bit of um, texture and um, difference on that. You can see how the yellow has been taken I'm taking this um, quite light green here. More powerful colors are usually at the front. This doesn't really have a front. This is just a little pattern that we're doing together to have a play. I don't want to get precious about it. I don't want to show you guys something and be like, oh, I just whipped this up when yeah, and make it look too ridiculously brilliant or anything. It just needs to be a little bit of a place that you can see. I just play around with paint as well because when you play around with it, then you can really see what it is you want to do if you are doing an actual composed piece. All right. I'm just going to add a little bit of red into this top layer now. You can see it's shiny and that will just um, intensify the pigment it should still blend around, you see that? I'm trying to keep it within the lines that have already quite naturally been created. The other thing that looks great with these flowers is purple. If you buy nothing else extra for this kit, buy a purple. It's so easy, it's so lovely. 
purples just do everything they do shadow I might do a I'll do a little thing for you guys on purples another time um, there we go hopefully that's it and um, the, the thing that looks great with um flowers is purple and yellow they look great together so if you're going to put a few dots of purple here and there come back and put a few dots of yellow next to it and you'll see oh, it looks so good when it dries I'm saying that now hopefully it happens <laughs> All right, like I said, don't play with it until it gets to mud. Um, I've got to go hand that into the sunlight and you guys can use a hairdryer, but we will be back in a minute. <laughs> well, that's all dry. You'll see there that I can touch it. It's not going to smudge. I am now going to take either a one or a zero. Um, sable paintbrush if you don't have one you can genuinely do it with a um, paintbrush just by being really careful but my advice to you is if you like this kind of look you should invest in a zero sable paintbrush you can buy them separately if I went back in with this wash to highlight some of the areas the wash is too weak it's not going to work so Oh, you know what I do have? I bought one of these to show you. Okay, it's a uh, Cotman's Windsor & Newton Payne's Grey. If you buy nothing else except for the purple and you have these half pans and you buy a purple, um, buy the grey <laughs> as well. They're interchangeable. I often use them together. Um, it is absolutely... Um, invaluable for finishing off you can dilute it and um, and use it but it's a bit dark sorry about that I'm so excited Got too excited can you actually see like that's how thick it is it's like coming off if I was to put that straight on like that it's gonna it, it's not gonna work as well so I put a drop of water on my paintbrush and I put the drop of water next to the grey. Okay, so that's pure grey, that's got a drop of water in it. I then clean my paintbrush. What I mean by that, let me show you. I wiped the grey off my paintbrush. I did not go in my water. That means I've got a dry paintbrush I take it into my drop of water and then I take it into here and then that's just going to give me a really nice um, line okay so I want to go put this grey at the bottom of some of my flowers to provide a little bit of definition so I'm going to decide I'm still not going to do, you know, <laughs> petals and <laughs> stamens and stigmas and whatnot. I'm just taking the grey around. Again, if I want a bit more grey on my paintbrush, I dip it in my one bit of water. This is a really light touch. But if you don't have grey, you can make it. Get your blue, get your red, some brown, and then a bit more blue. Let's see, can you see that we're starting to get a grey colour? A bit more brown, a bit more blue. Here we go. 
So if you do not have a grey, do not fret. grey's turned into a bit of a wash but that's okay again we're not going for perfection we're just hanging out together and doing a little bit of a experiment about using our half pans Did you see in the end how this purple and yellow turned out? You kind of think when you're doing it that the purple's going to eat up all the yellow, but actually it turns out quite lovely. There is genuinely so much more we can do with this and you're welcome to. You could get your, um, one thing your toolkit absolutely has to have is a white gouache. I'll put a link to this below. You could get um, a white gel pen. Um, you absolutely have to have that as well. And you could just go over it. Um, and be quite expressive, picking up some of the um, the light and whatnot, um, or you could go over it with your gouache. There is literally so many things you can do to finish that off. However, I wanted to show you what it would be like using a pan set of um, basic watercolor paints to make a little field of flowers. I'm going to now show you what it's like to use um, the tubes, the same colored tubes, or as close to the same colors as I have, um, to finish off the other painting. Um, I'm going to pause this video here um, in case you only have half pans and you only want to ever see the dry um, version. Um, and I'm going to upload the next video about using these ones as well so that you can watch them in two parts have a little bit of break. Um, thank you so much for watching today though. If you have found it helpful, it does help me out a lot if you give it a like. Um, so thanks guys, stay safe and um, be kind, look after each other. Thanks. <laughs>